Hi guys, welcome to Gun Shop with me, John, and today we have our two guests back from Langston Wildfowlers. We have Nick and Alan, and today we're going to be talking about wildfowling guns, or the modern wildfowling gun at least. Yeah, mo modern wildfowling guns. What to, what to buy if you're thinking about taking up the wonderful sport of wildfowling? Um, I think we can do no worse than just to go through what we've got on the, on the bench in front of us. <coughs> These are both mine and Alan's own personal guns. These are real duck hunting guns, if you like. These yes. are yes. not just showpieces. Yeah. Or, well, know, well, yeah. well, well worn. This this is my um, Benelli SB2. Super I'm, Black Eagle. Super Black Eagle 2. I'm a great fan of the inertia action because it's, uh, it's so reliable. It's only got a handful of moving parts. Um, and it doesn't matter how much clag you get in it, it still works. How do you find the three and a half inch chamber in that? I mean, I've I've shot quite a few SBEs and I find them certainly for for what I would use them for, which isn't wild fowling. I find the action a lot slower than a three inch action. Um, I think it is, and th there's also the question of recoil because there's no getting away from the fact that a three and a half inch cartridge does give you a bit of a clump. Mm -hmm. um, some people, and fortunately I'm not one of them, do find the recoil with uh, with the inertial action. Um, quite severe. Um, I, I don't find it a problem because I'm fortunate in not suffering from sort of recoil related issues. The stop takes a lot of it away, it's got a big rubber recoil pad, it's got these rubber chevrons. I was going to say it's a very very intelligent design uh, yes. and if you want to know about that we've done reviews on similar guns with the Comfortech stock and it does, it works a treat. Yeah. So it flexes throughout itself doesn't it, it's very clever. Yes, um, so the, 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 the if, we, if we go through the guns First, and then perhaps come back yeah. to the to the to the three-inch cartridge. Then how how long have you had this for? Uh, I've had that one for about twelve years. Oh, Christ. Some time. Yes. How, yeah. many, how many rounds do you reckon you put through it? I use I use it for pigeon shooting as well, so it's many many thousands. Never had any slip-ups, any faults. It's never ever failed to work ever. You so, can't say more than that, can you? No, you, you absolutely can't. Uh, before we move on to other guns, camo. Do you think camo makes a difference in a wild fowling gun? It, what does make a difference is the fact that in these modern guns, they are, um, particularly when we come on to the um, Benelli Supernova, um, what I think they've intentionally done is to remove as much metal and as much exposed metal from, from the whole deal. Everything's either made of plastic or coated in plastic. Um, th these guns you can sit on the foreshore in a, in a heavy salt environment, completely free of worry. Uh, if I sit on the foreshore with this conventional side by side with a, with a, with a conventional blue or black barrel, I can sit and watch that. You, can, you can watch from brush, can't you? Yes. It's impressive. Indeed. So, um, so to that effect, it doesn't really matter as long as it's, it's black plastic or camo. The, the quality is in the finish and the lack of rusting rather than the colour of the gun. Yeah. Absolutely, as we, we, we kind of touched on this earlier, something that's worth mentioning when you look at camouflage colours, of, of which there now are, are a, a, a plethora, a while yeah. ago you were quite limited. But what, and everyone says as is the best as well, which I always enjoy. Indeed. Of course, what people have got to remember is that these guns, the, uh, these modern ones, were built for the American market. And something like 95% of American wildfowling, or waterfowling as they call it, takes place in a freshwater environment. It's not down on the coast like we do. So there's no salt air. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, it's uh, because it's freshwater, you've got a freshwater um, uh, environment in terms of the plants that grow there. And these kind of banana This is a Max 5 or Max 4 or whatever this I would have been. This is a Max 4. It might be a 5. This is a Max 4 AD. Yes, but of course this is actually designed for um, freshwater reeds. And in, in, to my way of thinking, to the marsh that we shoot on, uh, this is a little bit too yellow. Yeah. If I'd had the option, I would have had one of the slightly darker or, or more green based... Uh, you, you picked camo because you wanted camo, I suppose, uh, over... Over black, black. Yeah. yes, I mean, the, the, um, um, because I'm not an agent for Benelli's, yeah. um, the, the, the black Benelli's are notorious for rusting um, in, in a coastal environment. Yeah. Fine in fresh water. I was going to say, it's something I've never suffered with. But The Americans don't have a problem with them because they don't shoot in the salt environment. Yeah. And because the Yanks, who buy them in their millions, don't have that problem, Benelli have never really sought to rectify it. So get, yeah. get a plastic coated gun. 
Yes. Oh, you could obviously have it Cerakoted yourself or Indeed you could. spray paint it or whatever. Yes. Or you could do what I do with this one, which is my... It's got spray uh, coating on it, hasn't it? It's uh, got cosmoline. No, 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 I just keep it clean. <laughs> It's Clean, cleaning it's, the gun is the. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a marvelous thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, 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 it's an interesting concept, particularly to many. Of Not something I'm particularly familiar with. To, I'm to afraid. Today's, today's modern um, modern gun owners. Um, we well, don't need to clean the barrel, do you? You, you really not. don't. This, you, and you might wonder why this is, uh, which is a conventional old uh, AYA Yeoman. Yeah, an AYA Yeoman non ejector. Non ejector. Twenty eight inch. 28 inch raised rib as, as they all had straight in stock, fixed chokes, and this Flat is hard rib. Yeah. Full, full and half choke. Why is this amongst a, a, a list of wild fowling guns? Well, the, the answer is quite simple that when you understand exactly what the steel shot regulations say, it's perfectly safe to use a standard velocity steel cartridge through a gun with more than half choke. Now again, we had this debate earlier. Yeah, I, I would argue it out that actually it's very gun centric, it's more yes. important that you match the load that you're putting in the gun, if it's steel, with your barrels and your choke. Yeah, I think that, go, that goes with any um, steel load you're using yeah. in any gun. You, yeah. wants to, you need to find out what is compatible with each. And, and as you rightly said earlier on, with, with the young men, they are built very robustly oh, yeah. and they will stand. Some of the lighter um, competition guns may not. So I think it's one of the things it's, you've got to try before and you... with the greatest respect being your gun, it's worth not a great deal. It's, it's very replaceable. Absolutely. Um, what's, Absolutely. what's a yeoman at an auction going to cost you? 30 or 40, 30 or 40 quid? quid. Yeah, yeah, you can one. buy a real nice one, £100, £150. Pound. Yeah. Which, which again, because we're, we're talking wild fowling, we're talking about people who are new entrants into the sport, you don't have to yeah. go to the to the £2,000 yeah. specialist gun. Mm -hmm. You can actually pick up, provided it's the right gun, and I take on board exactly what you're saying about, about its quality. Yeah. You, might, you might find that fits you quite nicely, actually. Quite long, isn't it? 15 and a quarter in. I digress. That's quite pleasant. <clears throat> yes. Um, I, I've used this one because I'm, I know that it complies with the, yeah. with, with the various um, regulations. However, we'll just point out that this gun is not steel shot proof. It is not steel shot proof. And from a professional standpoint, I'm going to say now that you shouldn't shoot steel for a not steel shot proof gun because that <clears throat> is the intelligent thing to do. In, However indeed. much we personally may not listen to our own advice yes. there. And, and I'm, I'm not going to argue that, uh, that, that, that standpoint with you, except to say that it is... That you have fired plenty of steel through it and you're still here and the gun bore is pretty perfect. Yes. Yeah. Which brings me on to one of the other alternatives. Um, if you've already got a gun that you're happy to, to shoot with and you're thinking of taking up wild fowling, and again, you don't want to spend an arm and a leg on something purpose-built. You could contemplate using a bismuth cartridge. Which are pretty good. The, the cartridge itself, ballistically, is excellent. The, the downside to them is the cost. Because if Box you, of those, £35, something like that. Something like that. It is, it's a truly horrendous sum. But However, you it. How many are you shooting on a morning wild fowling? Well, you're not going to fire an awful lot. But the, I suggest you might kind of try looking at it this way, which is, I, I, I shoot with this gun, I like it. What I don't want to do is to have to spend another couple of grand on something apparently more appropriate. But it's a good the, investment, Mike. Yes, yeah. but, well, oh, indeed it is. Yeah. But for the sake of a couple of boxes of these, I can use that gun and, and there is a significant saving over buying a new one. I know, of course, because you're in the gun trade, you will take a different view on that. Uh, I'm a great believer in there's a certain level of gun that does the job and just because something isn't expensive doesn't mean it's good, it can mean that it's just not popular and the AOA Yeoman is case in point in that, it's a side by side, not popular, non ejector, not popular, Spanish, not particularly popular. Yeah. I think as a first gun, I think actually probably one of the best first guns around on a budget and when you can join a wild family club for how much is? Thanks then. A couple of hundred quid. A couple of hundred quid. You go four hundred pounds. You've yeah. got yourself a waterproof suit, a Absolutely. gun, some cartridges, and a membership, and you can go and shoot one hundred and twenty days a year, essentially. Yes. I will correct you slightly. It's two twenty. It's two hundred twenty pounds. Yes. yes. Uh, it includes your basket. Includes your basket. So, you, know, that's, yes. you, you won't find you're insured that. as well you, for four hundred quid. Yeah, all yeah. You could you could buy uh, you could buy into a day's driven pheasant shooting. And you probably shoot five pheasants for the cost of an entire year's warfare. It's package. a very cheap time out, and you'll learn a lot, obviously, because you, for 220 quid, I'm, I'm guessing you get a mentor for your first year. Absolutely. Like that. Yeah. So that's cracking value for money. It also it? gives you all, round, all year round shooting as well, because we have some forestry commission that we shoot all year. So it's it's pretty it's cool a, going, isn't it? So you've got value for money, you've got 
as you said, yeah. 400 quid all in, you could have you know, done the shooting and all the, the kit to go with. And if you want to spend a couple hundred pounds more, that moves us on to our next gun, <coughs> that are also really very reasonably priced. Yeah. Uh, but only supernovas. Yeah, but this is yours, isn't it? No, this, this is, is my, This is yours as well. Sorry. Yeah, this is my backup gun. This is my backup gun, and this is Max Five. Again, in, in it's all plastic. The, the, the beauty of this gun is that everything is plastic, including the action. The only bit of metal it's got in it is the magazine tube. Yeah, and some, uh, some little the plate on the inside. The barrel and and, and the breech bolt. Um, I've got a sling on on this gun. And when it's not on this gun, I put it on that one. Yeah. When setting up a wild felling gun, both you will put a sling on. So oh, you would carry oh, the gun out, or you'll carry it in a bag out. Depending what marsh you're shooting, I shoot on the wash where we have a long walk before we get to the tide's edge. Yeah. So a sling makes it easier, and also it's a case of you're ready as soon as you go. Yeah. yeah. If you have a successful day as well, I like to say I've, I've gone out stalking without a sling on my rifle a few times, thinking that's great. As soon as you shoot something, you do need to get rid of the rifle you on your back, so you yeah, do need yeah. hands for it. The beauty of it is that, that whatever. Colour that whatever the marsh is, whatever particular type of warfare I'm engaged in, be, being able to, if I can, if I can do this on camera, the, the ability simply to stick the gun over your back, leave your hands free, stick yeah. bag, decoys, whatever else you're doing, the, the gun is not left lying yeah. on the floor. And Obviously. yes, and yes, I've seen this happen in the half light on the salt marsh, camouflage gun, put it on the floor, floor, walk away from it, can't find it. So again, yeah. three and a half inch chamber, pump action. I like pumps, um, they are almost indestructible. A lot of people can't get on with them because they never really stick with them long enough. Uh, you have to practice a lot to be good with the you pump. You do. Um, you need to break the gun in yeah. so that it's nice and slick. Um, and once you've mastered that pump in action, it becomes like second nature. Yeah. And my, I've always thought, any time you're going to go use a pump, not in anger, but for sport, where it actually matters, go and shoot it a couple of days beforehand, especially if you're shooting half an hour, because the amount of times I've gone, Bang! Waited for something about oh, forgot. Yeah. yeah, nothing's happened. Yeah. yeah, and then you, after using a pump, go back to an over and under, pull the trigger and try and rip the four end off. It's an interesting one. What, what, what the two that we left with, these are Allen's, I'm sure Allen are telling about there. This is a three and a half inch over and under Lincoln uh, Wildfowler. The modern ones are camo, this is one of the older ones, so it's in wood. I think it's a nice, it's actually a really good looking gun, isn't it? Mm. The beauty about it is, um, I can take it anywhere, whether it be pigeon shooting, wildfire, yeah. or on a federal And it doesn't look out of place. Exactly. It does, and you don't get people looking at you because you've got a three and a half inch gun because they couldn't tell the difference. It's a 32 inch barrel, <coughs> very good quality gun. Um, and I'm not very pleased with that. It's really specced as a proper mountain gun, which is yeah. a, a really lovely thing, actually. Yeah. Uh, and, as and, guns go. To be honest with you, as I say, it doesn't look out of place where you take it. Yeah. So I think that's the. Yeah. Yes, by And it's 32 inch, so. Yeah, 32 inch, multi show. So it is a, it's a, a brilliant all round option mm. as a wild fowling tool as well. And they're not overly expensive. Um, you know, they're not the cheapest to gun, but they're not the dearest. So, you know, um, what's the wild fowling? 1200 quid? Something yeah, like that? it's about 1200 quid retail. It's I think. not it's, killer. No, it's not the end of the world. It's, um, and it's, quite, it's quite, I mean, so the, the modern one, they don't do the wooden one now, they just do the camo one. But it's actually only a wooden stock, but it's camo. It's not yeah, a yeah, it's like You could quite happily strip it off, yeah. I expect. Um, it, it is a, a very pleasant gun to shoot. It is nice, isn't it? Yeah. When you put a three and a half inch cartridge through, which I've done very often, the recoil is a little bit unpleasant. I bet. Not too bad because it's about just under eight pounds. I should say it's got some weight there. Yeah, but it, you do know a three inch cartridge. You, you just don't turn a notice of it. But a three and a half inch, sometimes you do notice it. Um, but yeah, you know, it's one of the things that you you fire very few three and a half inch cartridges, unless the geese. In the same. And it does give you the option to change the, the cartridge very quickly, unlike a semi auto where you have to recycle it, reload. Yeah. So it, you know, it's a little bit different. It, it's an alternative to yeah. you know, other forms of wildfowl and guns. That brings us on to the beast. Yeah, this is awesome by the way. Uh, for those who haven't held one of these, this is a browning gold 10 ball. So it's automatic. 30 inch barrel, 3.5 inch chamber. For about 11 pounds or it's something? About, I think it's 11 and a half pound. It's a monster. It's awesome though. It's got an aftermarket choke on it, got a pattern master choke. Now whether they make any difference or not, I mean the browning chokes that I use a standard with it, uh, are perfect. I've never had a problem with it. I was uh, given the uh, the aftermarket choke as a present, so... Um, but I, it's I'm not talking, garish, is it? And you no. can check it's tight all the time, which no, is important. It, it's, it's absolutely... It's, it's a beautiful gun to shoot. It's one of the things, it's heavy, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but when it's uh, when you need 
a little bit of extra firepower. Yeah, I, I mean, my, my, my classic story is we were shooting in one of the adjacent harbours. <clears throat> I was a few hundred yards along the foreshore, the sea wall from, from Allen, who was shooting his 10. The, the widgeon were coming over in packs on that particular morning, and a big pack of widgeon flew over Allen. He shouldered the gun, first shot, clean miss. Second shot, killed a, killed a widgeon absolutely stone dead at about 65 yards. The third shot, killed six widgeon dead in the air. It rained ducks. Bad. All with steel as well. All yeah. with steel, yes. yes. I mean, the other thing as well is when we, we were one of the first clubs, well we were probably the first club mm. in the country to use non-toxic shot. Um, so what we'd done was, for the 12 boys, we insisted that the club members use non-toxic. For the 10, we were able to experiment a bit more. Um, but eventually we all, we, we've all gone out obviously because the law states we've all got to be non-toxic. Don't have a choice. Yeah, this exactly. Side, this side exactly. of the border anyway. Yeah, exactly. And depending you know, where you were shooting, what you shoot. Oh, I, I load a three inch load for the 10 ball, which works very well as well. I think. And how much weight do you put through that? Generally, what's your preferred load? There will be ounce of five eighths of four mil steel, which is the equivalent to BB. Yeah. You can go up to five mil steel if you're shooting. You know that the shooting's going to be and probably at the extreme, or not extreme range, but within the ranges. But at well, the, that five mil steel yeah. is ballistically capable at yeah. 65 yards. Yeah. It's a bit like shooting with the rimfire, I suppose. A yeah, five exactly. Ball, exactly. Yeah. I think that, that's the difference. You, you tailor your load to suit, and I normally carry a pocket full of your know, different loads. I mean, I've shot ducks over decoys with a three-inch cartridge with a, you know, with a number five still. So it, it, it does work, but it's one of the things that's you've got to make sure that you know what you're, where you're shooting and, what, and have the, the capability to change your cartridge yeah. in your pocket. So it's um. But I suppose that's the beauty of where something like that comes in is that yeah. an over and under a sub size is a lot easier to a put a selector on, yeah. b crack it open and chuck new cartridges in like Absolutely. that. Um, Unfortunately, with the Browning Gold, you haven't got a magazine cut off, so you can't just change one. So you've got to soak with a lot. <laughs> or you can do that awkward upside down yeah, yeah, thing yeah. to try and <laughs> yeah. save yourself. Yeah, that, <laughs> and as you found out earlier on, the spring on that is is a is pretty yeah pretty sharp yeah so you, you have, yeah, as I say it, it's one of the things I don't use all the time when I've got the wash I know I'm going after geese I will take it with me but I'll also take the twelve as well so mm -hmm. it's um so yeah. as, as a, an overall summary right so if we were building let's say the perfect duck gun my guess is both you would pick a semi-automatic yeah as your perfect duck gun just for recoil I mean I do else. use a semi as well I use a Viper one MP 153 and yeah. I've had that for 15 years yeah, and a couple of my friends have those and they swear by them you can't destroy them. Yeah, you know, really as much can't. as they wish they could, I think, sometimes. <laughs> but having said that, that it's, um, again, predominantly I will use a, a semi-auto most of the time, but I do like that and I don't, I don't like getting that too dirty because it is, it is too nice. The beauty of something like this, no offence, is yeah. with the plastic camo, yeah. you, could, you could probably throw muck on it and <coughs> it just hose it off when you get home and yeah. not care. We, we use one of these as a, a, as a, as a cripple gun in, in, a, in a gallon pump and it gets knocked, it gets trodden on, with muddy boots. And you don't cry. Uh, it's, it's, it is indestructible, it's bomb proof. Well, we generally, I have a Mossberg pump, and um, again, we, we take that because it's the oldest one. And, well, 500 uh, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and basically, you, you cannot. Best pumps in the world, yeah. I reckon. Oh, without a doubt, they're, they're, they're for not for phenomenal pieces of kit, but what you find is you could scratch that with that old black um, pump that I got, which is. Um, to be honest with you, we, we do all sorts with it, don't we? Uh, We've even used it in the past in the pump. It's yeah. a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> we, haven't, yeah. we haven't quite used it as an anchor yet, yeah. but certainly as a hammer. And you and again, you take it home, you hose it off, and you know, get all the mud out of it, it's fine. I mean, uh, you, you say that, <clears throat> there's been many occasions, particularly with this gun, which is, as I say, is the gun that I use. If I'm going right out on the mud flats, on mud patterns, and I know I'm going to get plastered in mud, I'll take that gun with me. And many's the time, I've come home and I've, I've put it in a bath. Mm. I've, I've run a couple of inches of water in the bath, stuck the gun in it, and occasionally high pressure hosed it off in the in, in the back garden. Uh, it says a lot for it, doesn't it? Yeah. It does say a lot for it. I think the thing that is, would probably take it, but you feel a bit mm. guilty about pressure yes. washing. In, in the environment that you're shooting, in, inevitably, you've got, yeah, if you're on the mud or out on the mud on the islands, you are going to probably at some stage get muddy. So you want to have something that you know that you can do, you know, you can clean properly. Uh, I know of a chap that went to Scotland, dropped his gun in the mud, the Winchester of all things, um, SX3 I think it was, and basically it ground and the grit ground it all up, it was out of a state, in the end he actually got rid of it because it just would not, could not get it clean and get, or get it a cycle properly afterwards, so 
I think it's a bit of a testament to to these things. I was going to say Benelli, I yeah. just they are wonderful yeah. like that, really. Uh, got it. We're building the perfect semi-automatic. It's the perfect wild fowling piece is a semi-automatic modern wild fowling yes, piece. It's a semi-automatic. As much plastic as possible. Basically plastic apart from the locking loads. Chrome line barrel, definitely. Yes. Multi choke? Yes. Um, you change chokes a lot and you duck guns? I, I generally don't. I, I, to be honest with you, I in my multi choke gun in this one, improved cylinder in, the, in this one. Yeah. And I use up to half depending on what um you know what where we're shooting and one place we shoot um, in Chichester Harbour, the Weijin fly in in the droves in the morning, and sometimes it can be a bit bit eye, half choked sort of comes in. I don't. I mean, as I said before, with the pattern marks, it was a present. I haven't used it, and but it I've works never had well. Yeah, I've never. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've never really had the, the need to because one of the factory chokes that come with work mm. equally as well as anything else I've tried. Yeah, you so. always have to put them in the right place. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So a multi choke, semi automatic, made of plastic, black or camo. No preference whatsoever. As long as it's coated in some way, shape or form. If you were going to go any other colour but black but a solid colour, let's say we were choosing to Cerakote a gun, what colour would you do it as an all over colour for Wild Fowler? I'd, I'd, I'd be interested in, interesting question, I would be interested in uh, one of a, a shade of green yet to be decided. A, a brownie green? or brownie just green, a, yes. If it, if mm. Mud colour. Mud colour, if it was a straightforward Cerakote and not a pattern. Yeah, that always just confusing why there isn't more brown guns out there. Yes. Uh, or green guns. Uh, does make sense to me, but probably hard. And certainly a grey one for the pun. And a, well, and a grey one for the pun, definitely. <laughs> so we've talked a lot about guns that you've both got, and both guns that you both would have had, or have had, and would rate. Something we always pride ourselves on the channel is being honest. What would you definitely not have? Uh, for, for me, straight off the top of my head, um, the, the, the nomenclature of this gets a bit confusing. But the first three and a half inch semi-automatic that Beretta bought out was called the Extrema. Yeah, so it, was, it, it, was, it was never called the Extrema 1, but it was followed by the, the Extrema, Extrema 2. 2. which was quite good. Now, the Extrema 2 was an exceptionally good gun, but the Extrema 1 had built into it so many design faults that it had the shortest production run of any, Benelli, uh, of any Beretta semi-automatic, of, of any Beretta gun in any description. It, was a, it, it bombed in America. It bombed in this country. It had the creepiest trigger pull you've ever come across. You couldn't get spares for it. It was a huge, quite big beast of a gun, which was okay. It was all right for long range shooting, but anything anything less than 50 yards, and you you'd need to be Arthur Schwarzenegger to crank the thing around after it. And there's there's still a lot of them in in, in service because if you buy it, you're committed. You, well, yes, because because like. Um, uh, Berettas, they, 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 they were well made and they last a long time, but it came from the same design stable that produced the the UGB... UGB, uh, UGB 25? Whatever it was called, yeah. yes. Which was, which it also was, had an immensely short production run. Yes, which was a drug-induced fantasy of a semi-automatic whatever that was. And I think they were all wacky backy when they when they punted those two guns out of the design studio. <laughs> but that's 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 the top of my list. Hate that gun. I, I think for, for me, I wouldn't entertain any of the, the very early franchises or the breeders or the savages because they are particularly unreliable. A lot of people you see know, the breeder was the only one I was going to go yeah. for as a semi-automatic. Yeah. That is uh, the, hard the, go. Unfortunately, they were. If you get one now, they're old enough.